Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here the GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 152. And today is our lesson number 3. Page 152, number 4. Let's take a look at it. Question number 4. We are told that a case contains case contains C cartons. Alright. And each carton each carton has B boxes. Alright. But well, each carton has B boxes and there are C, C cartons. For example, if this is 3 and this is 5, if there are 3 cartons and each of them has 5 boxes, it's going to be 3 times 5 or C times B. So far so good. And then we are told that each box has 100 clips. Each box has 100 clips. So, if this is how many boxes we have, they have 100 clips. So, so far so good. Question simply is, how many in two cases? How many in two cases? Well, how two, in two cases, this is how many they have in one case. In two cases, it's going to be twice as much. That's it. That's our answer. Times two. So, it's just two times 100, which is 200. Times B times C. That's is it. Or, if you want to leave it, if you want to keep the numbers the way they are, this is called the plugging in technique. If you just want to stick with plugging in technique, just go through the answer choices and see which one gives us 2 times 100, 2 times 100 times 15, 2 times 100 times 15, 2 times 5 is 15 plus 1500 is going to be 3000. Look for something that gives us 3000. If you go through the answer choices, uh, you will see that A does not give you, A does not give you 3000. A is just 100 times B times C. 100 times B times C. B times C is 15. B times C is 15. That's only 1500. That's not it. B says 100, 100 B over C. If you divide, if you divide, this this wasn't big enough. If you start dividing, it's going to be even lower. The answer is C because C says C says 200 B C. 200 B C. You see right here, 200 B C. 200 times 200 times B, which was our 5, Two hundred BC, two hundred times B, which was our five, times C, which was our three, fifteen times two hundred. Fifteen times hundred is fifteen hundred. Fifteen times two hundred is three thousand. The answer is C. Let's look at number. That one. That one was number four. Let's look at number five. Sum of prime numbers. Sum of prime numbers greater than sixty and less than seventy. We're looking for something that's greater than sixty and less than seventy. Now listen, if you're interested in learning the concept of prime numbers thoroughly, because this these are of course simple problems, the first fifty questions there. The first 50 questions are very simple, very easy, very straightforward. But as we get into a more difficult questions dealing with the concept of prime numbers, you have to understand they're gonna they're, they're gonna begin to get a little bit more tricky. If you want to understand, if you want to learn the concept of prime numbers and be able to do some sophisticated, some more uh, tricky problems, go and watch these videos. Revise, just search for it. Revise GRE. I know you're not here for GRE. I know you're for GMAT. I'm not insane. But the math does not change. Just type in revised GRE, day 79, 80, 81, and 82. Watch those four videos and you will get something out of it. Watch them and then decide for yourself uh, for future whether or not you want to you want to pay any attention to my recommendation. 
Okay, you will get something out of it, I believe. So let's list them. List all the prime numbers from greater than 60 and less than 70. So that's going to be 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, and 69. List all the numbers. Don't try to do it in your head as to which one is prime or not. Just list them all that way. You minimize the chance of missing more. But 61 is a tricky one. It's an odd number. It doesn't divide by 3. It's, a, it's an odd number, so it's not divisible by 2. Is it divisible by 3? It's not divisible by 3, because how do you tell if a number is divisible by 3? A number is divisible by 3 if, if, the sum, if the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. The sum of the digits here, 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 is not divisible by 3. Obviously, it's not going to be divisible by 5, because it wasn't divisible by 2. It's, uh, I meant 4. It's not going to be divisible by 5, because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. It's not going to be divisible by 6 because in order for a number to be divisible by 6, it has to be divisible by 2 and 3. In other words, it has to be an even number to start out with for a number to be divisible by 6. So now we're getting into the degree this 7, 8, 9. Let's not worry about it. Let's just keep this in. Let's keep this aside. Let's keep it in. Let's keep this number in abeyance. Let's keep this number in abeyance, and if you want to learn the meaning of the word abeyance, you can watch my vocabulary videos, and you will, you will find them. I think, I do not know what day it was when I covered it. Tomorrow's video, when I start, tomorrow's video, or even day five, I will tell you where to find uh, the word abeyance in my vocabulary video. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, you can watch and learn that word. And learn. Uh, you can watch the videos and learn that word. Let's keep it in abeyance right now, let's keep it aside for the time being. Let's, let's, we'll deal with it later. 62 is not an even number. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, 62 is not a prime number, obviously. It's an even number. 63 is divisible by 3. 63 is divisible by 3, clearly. 2 and a 1. Besides, 6 plus 3 is 9. The sum of the digits is divisible by 6 plus 3 is 9. And 9 is divisible by 3. So 63 is not divisible by 3. What about 64? 64 is an even number. 65 ends in a 5, obviously. It's divisible by 5. 63 is an even number. Now 67 is a tricky one. What about 68? 68 is an even number. 69 is divisible by 3. After you watch these videos on the on the concept of prime numbers, these are, these are, these, these, these videos deal with prime numbers. After you watch these four videos, you will learn that 61 is a prime number and 67 is a prime number. I'm not going to go into a long discussion as to how you tell, but when you watch, learn the videos, uh, when you watch the videos, you will find out. So what's the sum of 61 and 67? 61 plus 60, 61 plus 67. plus 67 is 128, and that's your answer number B. The answer is B. That's all. That's all there is. As I told you, either tomorrow or day five, I'll let you know where to find the word abeyance in which vocabulary video, okay? Then you will learn. If you like, you can learn it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.